Hello everyone, happy Friday. Today I'm sharing with you some of my fragrance favorites for the week and I also wanted to take this as an opportunity to have a conversation about consumerism and whether you can trust fragrance creators online to give you a sound recommendation. I'm also going to be sharing with you some of my uh, tips and strategies that I like to use when I'm contemplating making a purchase based off of someone's online recommendation and I'm also hoping to demystify some of uh, what you might be seeing online when it comes to creators, PR, and how they talk about fragrances. So if that interests you, definitely keep on watching. But if this is your first time on this channel, hello, my name is Anya. I absolutely love fragrances and I talk about them here every single weekday, Monday through Friday, along with a ton of bonus content in between and additional content on TikTok and Instagram under the username Anishka Fragrances. So full disclosure, this video is going to be probably not the best lighting. As you can see, I have a little bit of splotchiness here. I am actually filming early in the morning. This is the only opportunity I have to film this video um, so yeah that's what we're dealing with here today so hopefully you won't mind too much. The thing that inspired the chatty portion of this video was a conversation I had with an acquaintance of mine. She complimented my fragrance. I told her I was wearing Navitus Venom of Love. She had no idea about the fragrance. I explained the premise behind Navitus and how they do content creator collaborations and they work with perfumers at the same time. So you're basically getting a perfume that's been created by a content creator and a perfumer. And she straight away said, I don't trust content creators when it comes to recommending fragrances to me. And that kind of made me think because first of all, I'm a content creator. I didn't tell her I was one. I might tell her at some point, but I didn't tell her yet. And as I've developed more as a content creator, I've found myself kind of being on two sides, right? So on one end, I am a content creator. On the other end, I'm a consumer who watches these videos and consumes content. And um, in many ways, like a lot of my collection is influenced by content creators. So I want to have a frank conversation with you about some common misconceptions I think people have when it comes to content creators, hopefully to demystify some of that and just share my perspective. And I think that this will be an interesting video if you're interested in any of the behind the scenes and also want to see some of my favorites. Speaking of, let's talk about the first fragrance I want to share with you. This is Liam by Latafa. This is Liam Gray. I've been wearing this one a lot. And it's really such an easy perfume to just spray on. It's a tea, milky, like tonic um, fragrance with some big tea and vanilla. There's a really creamy, musky vanilla here in the base. And I especially love spraying this on as a hair perfume. It's really quite a beautiful fragrance. Let's get into the notes here. So notes for this one include cardamom, fig, and black tea at the top, a mid of iris, vetiver, and lapnum, and then a base of vanilla, sandalwood, tonka, and patchouli. So while sandalwood, or while musk isn't explicitly listed, I do get kind of like that signature Latafa vanilla musk kind of accord. But I really do like this one, and I actually do wear it a lot. So it's one of my most worn fragrances of the year. So let me just get into my notes so we can talk a little bit more about consumerism and fragrance. Well, one of the things that really fuels a sort of distrust when it comes to, I think, content creators and consumers, of course, this is not all encompassing, I'm just observing is PR. So people see content creators receive a lot of PR and in some ways I think it creates a little bit of distrust when you have a lot of hype around a certain fragrance um, and a lot of it is influencer driven. People seem to get a little bit uh, distrustful about that, completely understandably so, because from a consumer's perspective, you see this person getting PR, they're getting this for free, um, and you must be thinking, okay, they're getting so much, how can they possibly differentiate what they like and what they don't like, or how could they possibly understand what it's like for me to spend my money on something? if they're just uh, talking about it because they got it for free. I get some PR every month, but sometimes it can be a little bit of a task to get to know each fragrance and really have a valuable in-depth review. Like It takes time, it takes time, it takes several wears, and sometimes I feel like one of the things that's seeding this distrust is if you have so many content creators that mention a fragrance once or twice, you kind of think, are they actually wearing that fragrance if they said it's amazing and if they recommend it? Um, an example of a hyped fragrance that everyone talked about and now people don't talk about as much because this also happens is uh, Latafa's Yara Candy. I feel like people really hyped it up and now no one talks about it. And from like a consumer perspective, this is actually also why I tend to not buy fragrances right when they come out unless I really want to get it. And honestly, 
as a consumer, I'm so happy that I did not get Yara Candy because Yara Candy was, what, $50? And that's like an affordable fragrance, yes. But everyone talked about it. Everyone was hyping it up. I tried a decant and it's okay. It's just not like, it's just not worth the hype in my opinion. And I feel like in many ways it was hyped up because content creators were given the fragrance. There was like this whole marketing campaign around it. People were getting flown out to New York. People were attending the party. So uh, because of that, I think that there are some natural human biases that come into play. So if everyone's talking about this fragrance, you feel the need to also talk about the fragrance and it creates this loop that comes to a screeching halt when everyone's talked about the fragrance for enough and people actually try it and they're like, okay, it's nice, but it's not amazing. You know, so it's kind of interesting. I, I find it fascinating because I do marketing in my nine to five. And obviously, like I can absolutely say some of these brands really know how to market their fragrances. But from the consumer perspective, my advice would be to maybe take a step back, really consider um, your purchase and diversify. Don't just watch one content creator. Make sure you're watching a few people um, and then you can kind of get an unbiased opinion or as unbiased as you possibly can uh, just simply by diversifying what you're inputting and also diversify your sources. So I would highly encourage you to watch people on TikTok, watch people on YouTube if you can. Um, use Fragrantica. Um, I find Fragrantica reviews are really good because you're able to kind of really get a feedback from consumers directly. Now some people will really rip a fragrance apart just to rip it apart, but by and large people on Fragrantica are people who buy the fragrance themselves with their own money and they will share that opinion. Not saying if you get a fragrance for free your opinion is not valid. That's not what I'm saying at all, but I'm just saying diversify what your input or what your um, ingesting when it comes to all these reviews and opinions don't just watch one person and make a decision make a buying decision based off of one person even if you want to buy that fragrance i'd highly suggest you talk or you interact with a bunch of different sources um and then make that decision so yeah um if you don't do that it's on you I'm sorry, it's on you. I'm not telling you to spend your money as a content creator. I'm just trying to give you my perspective. If I like something, you might not like it. So that's why it's so important to make sure you are looking at a variety of people and take that information in as you can. Let's talk about a fragrance that's new to me. This was actually received in PR. This is Chabot's Mon Tiramisu. I love this fragrance. It's basically like a chocolate cocoa um, coffee fragrance with like a biscuit like tonic set of notes it's really really lovely like i absolutely love this perfume and i will say as a content creator it's so amazing to receive pr because it really does help with content creation i really love that i'm able i mean obviously i don't receive a lot of pr right now but i like that i receive some pr so i'm able to share with you fragrances as they come out and give you my perspective on them that's really helpful and really beneficial for me but also i think that's really helpful for you guys because you're able to you know get that review faster so uh yeah Monteramisu. this has no of coffee and whipped cream amid a vanilla biscuit and coconut milk and then a base of chocolate sandalwood and musk so I love this perfume it performs rather moderate um, and I think it's amazing I like that it's like tonic but it's not so milky that it's only focused on the milk it's such a beautiful fragrance you definitely smell all the aspects of a tiramisu in here but it's not gonna be a beast performer it's gonna be rather subtle which is synonymous with what Chabot does with their hormones they don't do uh, they don't do really intense gourmands. They just do gourmands that smell really photorealistic, but they perform very moderate. So Chabot's Monteramisu, um, I love this fragrance, and I actually do have a code available with them as well. I'll put it in the description box down below. I just got it this week. It is, it is an affiliate code, but you can use it if you want to save some money. Um, and I also, by the way, since we're talking about PR, since I just showed you something from, that I got in PR, one strategy that I find really helpful as a content creator and a consumer is to get a discovery set. And um, obviously as a consumer you're able to try a lot from the discovery set, get an idea about the brand, and really just pick out what you like. And as a content creator too, and I don't think enough people talk about this, uh, but as a content creator too, getting a discovery set can be extremely helpful because then you can request the fragrance that you want to try further from the brand. So this is an example. Um, I'm just getting to know Chabot 
as a brand so I requested that they send me a discovery set and I also think that this would be an amazing gift for the holidays because I opened this and I was like this looks so cool because you have four travel size sprays of some of their more popular fragrances so you have Le Concentre, Le de Vanille and Le de Biscuit as well as Le Chocolat. So these are basically different interpretations of the electronic like, note in fragrances and um, yeah I do believe my code is also available for this set as well but as a content creator I like when I'm first getting to know a brand I will straight away request a discovery set because once I request a discovery set I can try the fragrances out on my own time and then I can request the fragrance that I want to you know talk more about um, and I think that's really helpful because it means that if I have fragrances coming in they're fragrances that I genuinely resonate with and genuinely want to want to uh, share with you and from the brand's perspective it means that they're um, not just throwing money away and not sending me a, and not sending me a fragrance that I will dislike and won't really feel like I want to share as much so um, yeah that's something that really has been helping me out and by the way I will be doing videos talking about discovery sets for the holidays because I think the discovery sets are amazing gifts um, for anyone and yeah I have a few favorites that I absolutely love okay so let's talk about a fragrance that I actually bought with my own money this is Navitu's Baklava Royale this is essentially baklava like very photorealistic baklava with grilled almonds and grilled pistachios it's a very nutty fragrance and personally I think this can only be worn if it's really cold out. I like to wear this outside in the cold and this is such a beautiful fragrance, great for the winter time. And this was created by a collaboration with uh, Gabby Loves Perfume and Navitus. And I think I have, yeah, I have Melon Kiss as well. That's my favorite Navitus fragrance of all time, not gonna lie. And then uh, Black Bull Royale is also one that I really love. And I will say this, uh, Navitus is one of those brands that they don't have a lot of options when it comes to really sampling their fragrances in store. So you have Oswald in New York City, but I think that's it. I don't think that you have a lot of opportunity to actually try their fragrances in store. So another tip that I like to use if I'm trying to, you know, find out about a fragrance is to get a decant of a perfume. So um, a little bit ago I posted a video talking about some decants or talking yeah, a video in which I mentioned decants and someone made a really good point about sometimes uh, decants smell a little bit different um, depending on like what fragrance you get and I find that to be especially true with samples as well, a little bit less true with decants. I find that if you have more of, a fra more of the fragrance you're able to kind of get a better idea of what the fragrance smells like. So yeah, decants sometimes will not smell the exact same as the bottle whether it be because of environmental reasons or because of the way a decant was handled, uh, what have you. But I do think uh, getting decants of fragrances and really, you know, making sure that you're trying the decant first is a great way of sampling the fragrance first and then um, committing to the full size bottle. So I took the risk of buying the bottle when it first came out. That was my risk. I understood that if I didn't like it, it would be my own fault. And I can say I really do like this fragrance. I think it's great. But there are some other fragrances, as you very well know, that I do not buy full size. I tend to get decants. And this can be from a variety of places. Scent Split, the Siage by GB is another retailer online that I really like to get decants from. And also Etsy. So there are a lot of different options. Something else that I've noticed, and this might be a hot take, is I feel like sometimes when you receive so many fragrances all the time in PR, it can be a little bit easy to become desensitized to how much the fragrance costs. And when you're trying to communicate about the fragrance to your audience, it might come across as a little bit disingenuous if you can't already afford the fragrance that you're talking about. One of the things that I try to do is I only really try to showcase brands that I could genuinely purchase from even if I didn't receive them in PR. So that's why I talk about fragrances around the $200 plus mark max. So like, let's just say uh, one of my fragrances that I really love and I've been wearing is Paradis on Nirvana. This is around $240 full price. It's a beautiful gourmand, boozy, vanilla fragrance with a lot of nutty accords. I received this as a gift um, and this is a perfume that I genuinely could also buy 
with my own money. So that why, that's why when I talk about perfumes like this to you, it feels more genuine, it feels authentic. And if I recommend you a fragrance like, for example, Chabot's uh, Montramsu, this is like $140 full price, it's affordable niche and I feel comfortable with sharing it with you because even though I didn't purchase these fragrances, I can visualize myself purchasing them. So I'm able to format my review in a way that's more genuine and more authentic. Whereas if I was talking about a fragrance that was $500, $600, if I received that as PR, that would be amazing. But it's not necessarily a fragrance that I could afford to buy with my own money. So because of that, I feel like I would feel a little bit differently talking about it. Uh, not that I wouldn't also give it a full review too, but that's why I actually tried to seek out and talk about brands that genuinely I could also uh, consume even if I wasn't a content creator. So yeah, that's also why I talk about discovery sets, discount codes, because I want to be able to give you the most positive experience as a consumer. And even though I have been receiving PR and it's a wonderful experience to be able to do that, I still want to maintain a sense of authenticity. I still want to recognize that, hey, if I recommend something, it's something that you feel prompted to go and spend your hard-earned money on. I don't want that to be a waste for you. And also, that's why I still encourage you to try discovery sets, watch other people, really get a sense of what the fragrance would be like, not from one person, but from a variety of different people, and then make a decision regarding that. So last but not least, I want to talk about a fragrance that I've been gravitating towards quite a lot this week. As you know, this has been a very tumultuous week and I look at fragrances as a source of comfort a lot of the time and certain smells are very comforting to me and I've really needed that. So, so a fragrance that I've been wearing a lot is Gucci Momoir. This is a very beautiful, comforting herbal chamomile scent and sometimes you need that. So this is a fragrance I've been loving, I've been wearing, and it's one of those perfumes that I find a lot of solace in. So yeah, with that being said, those are all the fragrances I want to talk about. Let me know what do you think of some of these uh, chatty video formats. Let me know if you want to see more chatty content from me. I think at one point I might try to do a Q&A. Um, so that will be coming, or I will start asking you guys to submit questions within the next week, I think, because I would love to, you know, uh, talk to you a little bit more candid candidly. But yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching till the end, and I will see you next time.